Welcome to Getafe, south of Madrid, and the Airbus facility here where we're going to get an up-close look with rare access to the MRTT program. That's the multi-role tanker transport used for a variety of missions, including mid-air refueling. Let's get into it. So we have just dispatched our Beluga on its way to Madrid. Unfortunately, we are not with it on this occasion. We are flying commercially to Madrid. So we're here at Toulouse Airport, ready to take the Iberia flight over to Madrid. About 50 minutes flying time today, Gabe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And you're going to be in the middle seat? Oh, absolutely. My favorite seat. Uh, legroom is never a problem for me, so <laughs> I can go anywhere. And I took the window because um, I have the bigger camera. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, there was a chance that one of us might be able to fly on the Beluga at some point. That was a tantalizing possibility, but it didn't work out in this case. We're still going to try and do that at some point. Yeah, we're BFFs with the chief pilot. He liked us, I think. So in case you missed the Beluga XL action at Airbus that we did yesterday, put a link up here. I think it's going to be on this side. And uh, this will be the continuation, part two. And we're headed to Hetafe, which is about, uh, you said, 10 miles to the south of the airport. So a little drive over to the Airbus production facility there. And we're going to see something totally different but also very cool and something that you don't see often right I absolutely seen, i haven't seen much about this so and of course make sure to check out the previous videos so that you can see us wearing some of the best safety gear some of the best ppe i think i've ever seen if you want to see us dressed as essentially jockeys uh, that's that's the video you want to check out. yeah horrible jockey hats but that that are very comfortable absolutely so there's that i, I wonder if they have the same hats in spain though Ooh. or do they insist on something a little cooler yeah. but it's time to get on board this somewhat boring iberia a321 but it's never boring when you're flying right absolutely let's do it first saw this design on the windows I thought it was some like sort of construction project or there'd been an earthquake or something but it's actually <laughs> just it's actually intentional yeah it's really nice when you don't have the middle seat taken huh? I mean, that's a big difference I think, I think it's going to be taken I think it's definitely going I checked the seat map and it looked like it would be taken I think it's gonna be occupado in the next few minutes <laughs> occupado occupado <Perdon>. yeah <laughs> although on the plus side compared to the beluga we do have windows at our seats. Very true. Although we probably would have jump seated on the Beluga, right? Yeah, just one of us. Again, we'd have had to arm wrestle. <laughs> it was going to be fun because it would have necessitated an armrest to figure out who would fly on the Beluga, the one seat. And now we don't have an arm wrestle as part of this video. Yeah, or at least we don't have a reason to. But we've got, what, another 24 hours to yeah. kind, of, kind of find a reason. Yeah. Somehow I lost the window seat in this exchange, but at least we have the middle free now, so. Absolutely, so, some people very kindly didn't turn up. Relatively painless Iberia flight, I would say. I would say absolutely painless. I'm always happy when an Iberia flight ends up as in the painless category. That's the bar it has to clear. Great views over the mountains, yeah. 50 minutes, smooth flight, door to door, nice and easy. And but it wasn't a beluga, was it? No. But we did get a window. We got a window and an empty middle. Absolutely. Actually, you got a window somehow. I got a window. Despite the fact that I had clearly negotiated the window. Exactly. You started <laughs> with a window, I ended up with one. I think everyone's a winner. Here we are, Madrid Airport. The curse of Madrid Barajas strikes again. 
uh, the usual really smooth check-in experience. Um, once we've got past that though, we're now on our way to uh, Getafe to go and have a look at the Airbus facility there and hopefully see the Beluga uh, that we saw leave Toulouse just earlier. Okay, so you'll see here we have shoe cover PPE instead of replacement shoe PPE, uh, which is a lot more stylish. It's a wide fit, as you can see, so everyone is very inclusive. Uh, and this means that if someone does drop an Airbus A330 on your foot, you won't feel a thing. Here we've got a bit of extra gear on. We've got the FOD bag, which is kind of cool. I was kind of hoping to have one of these. Um, every Airbus employee has a FOD bag. Is that right, Chris? Every Airbus employee that is right, has yeah. one of these bags? Absolutely. Modeled as professionally by me. And that's for putting in your loose items, but also anything you might find along the way. That's foreign object debris, as many of you will know. And uh, we've got some really funny shoe covers as well. And the standard issue cap. This is where Airbus is busy at work converting A330s into the MRTT. These could be new build A330 COs, there is no A330 NEO MRTT just yet, or they could be secondhand aircraft that get converted. And it's a lot of work. The conversion first requires some parts to be removed, around 40 truckloads worth, they tell me. They need to strengthen and reinforce the structure of the aircraft and wings, then they need to make high precision cutouts where eventually things like the mid-air refueling boom will be installed. They need new brackets for the different electrical wiring required in the MRTT, the list goes on, and only then can they install the systems that are unique to the MRTT, plus a range of hardware like the refueling boom itself. During that entire process, they need to preserve the aircraft in airworthy condition as well, especially with regard to the engines. 100,000 hours on average they spend doing one of these conversions from a civilian A330 to MRTT and they said it's about 10 times the amount that they would spend on an A320 production line. So huge amount of work that has to go into this conversion process. This is the gap we showed you in the video before. This is a key part of the conversion and a really delicate operation because we need to maintain always the stress-free condition at this stage in the aircraft. We try to use a plug-and-play philosophy as much as possible. It means to prepare all the parts outside the aircraft and then just to use the aircraft for a plug-in operations. Let's see how the external station works and what we do there. This part is manufactured, what we call the Bluetooth, or, or the main part, outside uh, our facilities. And then when the part is coming here, we perform all the drilling in order to prepare the fixing for the aircraft. Two second-hand aircraft, one for a Spanish Air Force, another for a French Air Force. This is in the structural phase conversion, and the other one is in the test and system installation. Okay, so both of them are second hand, that means we need to adapt our industrial flow to the status of the aircraft in order to prevent any further issues and we need to have additional inspection for example for a corrosion or other surprises that could happen or popping up during the conversion. And this is typically where how the air operators are going into the, the wings, okay just to give you a flavor how difficult is the access. Amazing to see that they work inside the wings quite a bit. They have to reinforce the wings, among other things, and the access to those wings is such a small little porthole. I don't think I would want to do that job. Amazing. You may already know, we are using the HoloLens, the augmented reality glasses, already in AG2 to install some harnesses on the aircraft. So the blue collar will put the glasses on and they will see where they need to install the harnesses all along the aircraft. And here we have an MRTT destined for the French Air Force, as you can clearly see. Let me know in the comments, I'm curious, which one do you prefer? The MRTT in the military gray or in more of a livery, painted white or another color? Let me know. Curious what you prefer. I'm kind of torn between the two. They both look great. This uh, monument, what we call a console, 
okay? This is at the very beginning of the conversion because it is just the structure and now we are equipping with harnesses. After the harnesses and the racks, the equipment itself will come and then we will move this big uh, structure to the rear part of the cockpit where the boomer will be. These are already installed, so we are in the middle of the installation after their structure is ready. Yeah, you see the letter that is down, that means D down, U up, okay, up, up to and forward, okay, that is uh, indicating by ah. light to the fighter that is more or less down the floor. This is the boom, it can be deployed from 11 to 18 meters. It can be controlled by the boomer from the, from the cockpit. And it is the station, it's here where we plug it and then where we start all the tests. So the capacity uh, of refilling in liters per second can be 75. That means you can refill your own car in just one second. And the capacity of refilling for a, for a pot is 25 liters per second. Hair check, how's our hair? You tell me. Uh, uh, I don't. Could be better, but yeah. So we are in the fly line. We have five positions in the fly line. We are the running position for the engine test. And as well, in the different position, we are performing different tests. All the outdoor tests, like high frequency, like a pressure tests, like some of our field tests for the pots, for the booms, are performed here. In the farthest position, we have a MMF-8, which is multi MRTT fleet for a nature. It's the number eight to be delivered in the next weeks to come. And uh, so this is the aircraft, more mature, in order to introduce you what is a real MRTT experience, okay? Can you tell me a little bit about your experience? Well, it's, 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 uh, it's, every aircraft is very different, uh, but for us, uh, mainly most of us are coming from uh, uh, military fighters. So transitioning from a small fighter to a big aircraft like this is a big change. And then you, you get a little, it's a little bit of respect at the beginning, but then uh, you get used to it. It's very easy and nice to fly. And then you come to like it very soon. You, you do things completely different than you are used to. Mm -hmm. But then there's a lot of fun in, in some of the staff. So just refueling fighters or refueling yourself from another MRTT is a, is a very good experience. You've never done it before and it's wow. How so. is the coordination with, uh, with the boomer? Is it uh, you constantly in contact? Or? Yeah, we are, we are in constant, we're in hot mic. So uh, we keep a constant uh, communication. We can select uh, uh, if we want to talk to them or we, we have want to have them in separate channels. But uh, we uh, talk constantly and also we have a nice feature in here which is uh, this is a display uh, we can have uh, some tactical information this is not in the civilian aircraft by the way or we can have the video he's seeing in there to monitor the receivers and monitor their tour refueling so it's it's kind of cool wow yeah. very cool so you might also monitor the refueling process yeah, yeah. yeah that's correct amazing so in the old in the legacy uh, tankers you have the guy looking at the bag through a glass in here we can all monitor from the cameras and it's uh, uh, i mean the awareness is much bigger in this type of aircraft than, than in legacy ones one of the most impressive things about the a330 mrtt is how much fuel it can actually carry compared to some other tankers so in the time it's going to take me to have a five hour nap in this lovely crew rest area we can refuel a eurofighter typhoon 17 times just gonna just gonna have that nap now this aircraft is destined for NATO, and it's going to be their eighth of these aircraft. And they call these MMF, a little bit different from the rest. It stands for Multi-MRTT Fleet. My native habitat of economy. Yeah. <laughs> but look at the legroom, have you noticed? It is pretty good. I mean, yeah. I'd say that, that that's at least up front on a, on a low-cost carrier. I even like the decor. I like the color. Our first lavatory.
One cool thing about the MRTT is that it's configured much like a civilian aircraft in the passenger cabin. The idea is that it can serve multiple roles from carrying passengers to performing medevacs and rescue missions, all while being able to perform mid-air refueling and hold a lot of heavy equipment in its cargo hold at the same time. The fuel needed for refueling is able to be held in the standard A330 tanks, meaning there's no need for additional fuel tanks taking up cargo space. That crew-only hatch here is also something you wouldn't see in a passenger A330. I like that it, there's little signs Yeah, really subtle. that it's not just a standard 330. Teeny tiny table for teeny tiny things. We've got a pretty standard tray table. Pretty good. We've got seat backwards and seat forwards and a leg rest as well. So let's, let's go for max comfort here, see what we can get. There we have it. Max comfort on an A330 MMF. Not sure what that's can't for. Fit a standard beverage. It's commemorative of the 100 years of the company. Okay, what I do here, uh, I work in Airbus in flight test, and what we do is to develop the new solutions, the new functionality that the MRTT is going to be equipped, equipped in the future. So the initial assessment, validation in flight of the solutions are performed in this flight test environment. Mm. And this is uh, one of the, of the duties as a test operator. Yeah. We have here different controls, displays, and, and sticks. Starting from the lower part, we have a telescopic stick. This stick controls an internal telescopic beam in the boom that is extended to make a contact with the receiver. The contact is made when the boom is properly aligned with the receptacle. So with this flight control stick, we fly the boom vertically and laterally to align with the receiver. We have to avoid elements as the canopy or antennas in order to avoid hitting the, the receiver. And when the, the boom is properly aligned, then the extension is performed. We have different switches to uh, to command lights that are used by the uh, receiver pilot to determine the position and the corrections. We have uh, switches to disconnect when the boom is engaged into the receiver receptacle. We command the disconnection with these switch and we fly the boom away. On the middle part, we have this multifunction and control display. And here we can review the different systems. Systems related with airport refueling some of them are from the aircraft, for example, the fuel tanks, but we have additional information here as the specific fuel pumps used for aircraft refueling. Mm -hmm. And then we have several control panels, physical control panels, and starting from this uh, side, we have the, the audio control panel in order to uh, be able to hear the different radios and to select the radio that we want to transmit to. We have a control panel to select different views on the main monitors. For example, we have here a pan and tilt system, and we can orientate the camera to the detail that we want to, to inspect and monitor. Hmm. Okay. Got a very special person here. I never knew about his channel before today, but uh, in, in Spanish, of course, but I know a lot of you out there watching the channel are Spanish speakers, so... Uh, I, I'm Sergio Hidalgo, uh, you, can, you can find me on YouTube by that, Sergio Hidalgo. And yeah, I upload uh, content of aviation, aerospace industry, as in general. Entonces, para ustedes que hablan español, <laughs> suscribir en este canal, Sergio... Sergio Hidalgo. Hidalgo. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> So today has mostly been about the MRTT, but we have come full circle. We are here in the platform that brings loads onto the Beluga. Now you'll see at the very end there, that's the road end. This is the airplane end. It's as simple as that. So a load arrives either by an internal railroad or by normal road. It gets taken up a lift, which can carry anywhere from 18 to 20 tons worth of load. It then comes all the way down this platform and it's loaded onto the aircraft. The Beluga itself can take two pairs of A350 horizontal stabilizer units, which are the pairs that you see behind me right now. And when the Beluga arrives, it has a very strict target turnaround time. 
If it arrives empty, that's with no existing cargo on board, they aim to turn it around in 70 minutes. If it arrives with a load, which needs to be unloaded and then a new load put on, the target time is 80 minutes, and the guys here work very hard to make that happen. Additionally, the aircraft can be refueled whilst they're loading it, which keeps that turnaround time really sharp. And that's a key thing about the design of this hangar, right? The aircraft body is mostly outside still, and that allows them to refuel it as they're unloading and loading. Absolutely. Pretty cool. We want to focus a, a little bit on the boom system. Okay, the, the boom system is one of the two standard refueling systems that the MRTT uh, has. And it's, the, it's a fly-by-wire system. That means that it's full, fully digitally controlled by a control computer. And it was, in fact, the first uh, fly-by-wire system uh, certified in, in Spain. I invite you to uh, take a pair of glasses so that you can see the operation and this is how the uh, operator monitors the, the system and the operation. It's a, a full uh, high definition. With this stick, yeah. you can control the, the boom position yeah. in left and right and up and down yeah. direction. Okay, cool. Okay. And with that stick, you can extend the telescopic beam. Right, pushing it forward. Extend. Pushing it forward, it extends. So okay. extend to mid length, you can check on the scale uh, at the left, that's the telescopic length. Oh, yeah. So this should be around half the green band. Okay, so like a 12 or something? That's good. Yeah. Okay, so now uh, you would coordinate with the receiver to yeah. move forward. Uh, Elena will do it for you. Okay. You align the boom and try to insert it into the receptacle. Okay. It requires quite a, yeah. a lot of training and skills. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, extend. Extend. Keep extending. Keep extending. Good. Now you see couple. Yeah. That means that contact is achieved. Nice. Now you can relax. Everything is uh, automatic now. You are refueling. A uh, small receiver. Yeah. We can refuel three tons, five tons. It takes some minutes for the, for the operation to be done. Yeah. And once uh, it is fully refueled, you can command this connection by pressing. Uh, one, one important thing, you see that the, the stick is moving. Yeah. It is following the boom position in contact. So that's an automatic the stick. Yeah. yeah. So, so that when you disconnect, the stick position is consistent with the boom position. Yeah. And once you disconnect with the by uh, pressing this button over here, yeah. you have to fly the boom away to separate from the user. So this is very, very important for our customers in terms of reducing crew workload, yeah. increasing safety margins, potentially reducing training costs in the future yeah. by having an operator that is uh, uh, trained to perform operations only in automatic mode. So it has uh, a lot of benefits technically from an engineering perspective. It's been an incredible achievement yeah. for us. Yeah.